Greetings, YouTubers, and welcome to my 36th TTM video. Today, I will show you six returns I got. Yes, I'm very excited. And I'm a couple of pickups as well. It's been about a little over a week now since I've shown anything. I didn't have anything to show. And I apologize for that. I've been watching everybody's shows uh, as best I can and responding. You all have great channels. And might be a little bit of a long one today because I've been away for a while, so I apologize for that. First, I'm going to do something uh, I should be doing a lot more of, and that's giving shout-outs to different channels. And if I don't shout-out your channel now, do not get upset. Please, I will shout it out. I'm, I'm going through the list. First one I will shout-out to is a new one, The Real New Jersey Cards. And he's got a great channel. Just started out. He's got about 27 subscribers. Great channel. Lots of cards. This guy knows about hockey. You want to learn some more about hockey, check him out. But he's also got other cards as well. Baseball, football, you name it. Second one is Vintage Cards Steve. This guy has one of the best collections I've seen of cards. Gives great talks, gives shout-outs. He's got about 100 subscribers. Check him out. He does an excellent job. He's always spreading the word about other channels to help them out. So, yeah, he's a great channel. I like watching his as well. And another one I like watching is Ripping Vintage, and that's just what he does. Rips Vintage Cards. Old packs, lots of them. Football, baseball, hockey, you name it. This guy, he rips them. And it's really fun to see some of the old stuff. So check them out. Again, if I haven't uh, said your name, please don't get upset. I will certainly um, give more shout-outs as I do more videos now. This first card I picked up, is a movie card, so to speak. Mr. Baseball, it came from. Tom Selleck was the star right there. And that was a 1992 movie. He played a first baseman with the Yankees, who I think gets traded to Japan. Doesn't like it over there, and all of a sudden likes it. It, it was an okay movie. It wasn't anything that, you know, made me watch it a hundred times. I didn't get the card for him to sign it. Well, hopefully one day he will. I met him once at the uh, Hart Senate office building in Washington. Very nice man. I didn't have anything for him to sign, though. But the reason I got it is the guy next to him, the guy who took his spot on the team. I want him to sign it hopefully one day. I think he has a signing coming up in January. And it's the only time I'll ever see him in a Yankee uniform. So i got to take advantage of it. And that's the big hurt. Frank Thomas, yes, was in the movie right there. So that's when I saw it. I'm like, man, i got to get that card signed. No doubt. Get the big hurt to sign it. So that's nice to add to the collection if he can sign it. And this one I got through the mail. Mickey Mantle. Do I PC Mickey Mantle? I try to. His cards are so expensive, you know. So I get the reprints and all that if I can. But he's one of the guys, along with Dave Winfield, Thurman Munson, um, you know, anybody that played on the Yankees, the Mets, or the 70 A's. I love that team. Colorful uniforms. So those are the guys I really go after a lot. But I, I do anybody. I'm all over the board. But I got this from Mr. Haas of Cards. Yes, Haas. Bought it on his eBay uh, site. And he's got a lot of cards there, so this was nice. Very reasonably priced and shipped it out fast. I got it in a couple days, so thank you, Haas, for that. Now let's get to the purchases, pickups, whatever you want to call it. This first one I got to add to my collection of programs, and that is a 1972 official scorebook for the National League Championship Series between the Pittsburgh Pirates of Defending World Champs and the Cincinnati Reds. It's in pretty good condition. I picked it up because I only have one league championship series program, and that's 83 when the White Sox played the O's, the Orioles there. So I saw this one, I'm like, wow, it's got Roberto Clemente all over it. And he's a great player. If I could PC his old cards, I would, believe me. One of the greatest players ever. And I saw it, and I'm like, oh, yeah, I'll get it. It's pretty good condition. Um... Pirates were the defending world champs. They lost to the Reds that year in the NLCS, and Reds lost to the uh, A's. But glad to add that to the old collection. Now, the first card I will show that I got is an autographed card of a player I had not gotten anything signed from. So I'm glad I picked this up, made an offer, and they accepted it. And that's Mr. Keith Hernandez, one and only Keith Hernandez. That's his full name was born on October 20th, 1953 in San Francisco, California, the city by the bay, 67 years old. Uh, one of the high schools he went to in Pacifica was Terra Nova High School. He teamed up with a guy, pitcher by the name of Bob McClure, who went on to pitch in the major leagues for the Brewers. 
uh, Keith Hernandez sat out his senior year because of a dispute with the coach, and people thought he had a poor attitude, so he got labeled like that. He played uh, junior college ball at San Mateo, very briefly, because in 1971, the St. Louis Cardinals selected him in the 41st round of the draft that year, 783rd player overall selected, and they got a great steal. He made his major league debut on August 30th, 1974, at the Stick, Candlestick Park, against the San Francisco Giants. He went one for two, had two walks, he had an RBI with a single in the ninth inning. His major league career went from 1974 to 1990, with the Cardinals, he started out with from 74 to 83, and with the Mets from 1983 to 89, and concluded with the Indians, the Tribe, in 1990. Uh, he finished with a 296 lifetime average, 2,182 hits, 162 homers, and 1,071 RBIs. That's, those are real solid numbers besides his fielding, and I think he should be in the Hall of Fame. Hopefully one day he'll get there. That's just an opinion. <laughs> In 1975, the St. Louis Cardinals decided to trade their first baseman, who was Joe Torre. They traded him to the Mets so they could make room for Keith Hernandez. Originally, he wore number 18 his first two years, but then he switched to number 37. He wanted to insist that his uniform always end in a 7, because that was in honor of the Mick, Mickey Mantle, whom he also shared a birthday with as well. Uh, one of his best seasons ever came in 1979. i got to say, probably his best. He hit 344. 48 doubles and 116 runs scored, and was named the National League Co-MVP that year. He was named the Co-MVP along with Pittsburgh's Willie Stargell, Pops. They both are league MVPs that year. Uh, his first World Series he played, and he won, 1982, with the St. Louis Cardinals. He had eight RBIs in seven games in that series. Although Daryl Porter, the catcher, was named the World Series MVP. But on June 15th, 1983, one of the most lopsided trades in baseball history. Yeah, it's in there, i got to say. He was traded to the New York Mets for pitcher Neil Allen and pitcher Rick Ownby. Pretty much nothing. <laughs> Not knocking those guys, but, you know, they didn't really do much for the Cardinals. Hernandez didn't really originally want to go there because the Mets were not good. But he went. Whitey Herzog said Hernandez had become a cancer on the team. And he never regretted trading him at all. And some of it, Keith Hernandez says, was probably his drug use that affected his, uh, you know, relationship with Herzog. But he said after he got to New York, he never did drugs again. He got to the Mets in 83. His first full season was in 1984. And he finished second in the MVP voting. The winner that year, the guy who finished above him, was from the Cubs, Ryan Sandberg, with the uh, National League East champ Cardinals. The Mets were second. That was the Mets' first winning season since the bicentennial year of 1976. Um, a year later, in 1985, he finished 11th in MVP voting. Teammate Gary Carter was number six, and pitcher Dwight Gooden was number four. Willie McGee overall won the uh, MVP that year. But Davey Johnson loved him. You know, he said he had such a strong and accurate throwing arm, the Mets could really use the offense, defense, I should say. They made their defense really run through him on that uh, field. He's considered one of the greatest fielding first basemen of all time. No doubt about that. He had such a gun, and he could really feel those bunts. In 1987, he became the first Mets team captain in the history of the franchise. I thought they would have had somebody, but apparently they didn't. Five times he was an All-Star, two times a World Series champ. He won it in 1986 as well as a member of the Mets. Played in two great World Series where its teams had to really come back. In 1988, he played in the National League Championship Series with the Mets, but they lost to the, the Dodgers that year. And as I said, he was National League co-MVP in 79 with Willie Stargell. He had 11 gold gloves in his career, two-time Silver Slugger winner. He's also the NL batting champ in 1979. He's a member of the Mets Hall of Fame. He's also a Mets broadcaster as well. And did TV bits. Uh, Law and Order appeared in an episode, and of course, most famously, Seinfeld. Check that episode out with Hernandez. Uh, Keith Hernandez, is, uh, he said he went on TV on a Mets broadcast and explained that he's not Mexican, although his teammates nicknamed him Mex a long time ago. Hernandez said he's not. 
His father is Spanish, and his mother is Scots-Irish, so he wanted to clear that up, he said. I thought he was Mexican, too, until I heard that. Uh, since childhood, another fact of him, he's been a fan of the U.S. Civil War, a big Civil War buff. And his dad uh, played baseball with Stan Man Musial in World War II when they both served in the U.S. Navy, so... Glad to finally add an autograph of Hernandez to the uh, the collection there. And the second card I picked up to be autographed, i got to send one out to him, though. And I will. This is number 222 of 299. And that is Mr. Andre Dawson. And I picked this one up because he's in the old Expo uniform. which They don't exist anymore. I know the Nationals, I've been to a bunch of their games at their stadium, which is nice. Put his number up in Gary Carter's, but no. Montreal Expos, and one day I think Montreal's going to get a team back there and probably be called the Expos again, but Andre Nolan Dawson uh, born July 10th, 1954 in Miami, Florida 66 years old and he's nicknamed the Hawk, got that nickname from his uncle as a little kid, he used to attack the ball, really attack it when it was hit, other people would like run away and his uncle said, you attack that ball like a Hawk that's how he got his nickname. He went to Florida A&M University in 1975 in the draft. He was selected in the 11th round with the 250th pick by the Montreal Expos. So they got another steal there themselves. His major league career went from September 11th, 1976 to September 29th, 1996. He had 279 his career, had 2,774 hits, 438 homers, and 1,591 runs batted in. He played for the Expos from 1976 to 86, played for the Cubs from 87 to 92, and then with the Red Sox and the Florida Marlins, where he finished out his career in his home state, hometown. In 1977, his rookie year, he hit 282 with 19 homers and stole 21 bases, and he narrowly beat out Steve Henderson, Hendu of the Mets, for the National League and, uh, Rookie of the Year that year, I should say. While playing for the Expos, he finished second in the MVP voting in 1981, lost out to Mike Schmidt, who won his second during the strike season, and finished second again two years later in 1983 when Dale Murphy of the Atlanta Braves won his second straight NL MVP. He played 1,443 games for the Expos, the fourth highest in franchise history. He was the only player in Expo history to hit over 200 homers and steal over 200 bases. Uh, during his time with the Expos, he twice hit two homers in the same inning. The first time occurred on July 30th, 1978, against the Braves at the launching pad at Atlanta Fulton County Stadium. And he did it again on September 24th, 1985, against the Cubs at Wrigley Field in the friendly confines against his future teammates. Two years later, they would be. Uh, he played in Montreal at Olympic Stadium, which had the artificial turf. It was a big stadium. I remember it as a little kid. And his knees took a beating on that artificial turf. It took a real hard beating. And the Expos in the late 70s and early 80s had great, great teams. They always reminded me of the San Diego Chargers in football at that time. They had great teams, great offense, but they could never win the, uh, the World uh, Super Bowl or get there. And the Expos were the same way. They had so much talent. You know, Tim Raines, Andre Dawson, uh, Gary Carter. It's just three Hall of Famers right there. And they had Tim Wallach, who was a great player, and they just never could win it. They got to the playoffs once in 1981, and for Expo fans, that's a rough time. Blue Monday. Rick Monday hit that home run to send him packing. In 1986, he became a free agent once the season ended, and he wanted to play in a team that had natural grass. And at that time, there was collusion among the owners. They weren't paying anybody anything to keep players on the same team or at cheap prices somewhere else. He campaigned to play for the Cubs. The general manager at the time, Dallas Green, said no. And he said that the Cubs, who were going to start Brian Dayett in right field, didn't need him. You know, Dawson moved to uh, right field while he played for the Expos from center because of his knees. So Dallas Green also said one player could not make a 71-91 and 91 team into a 91-71 and 71 team. So with the Cubs in spring training in Mesa, Arizona, Dawson and his agent came down there with a blank contract sign. What do you think is good? You put it on there and we'll play for that. Dallas Green at the time said it was a dog and pony show. That's, that's a joke. No. But eventually, Green and Andre Dawson's agent got together and reached an agreement. 
And the agreement was on a $500,000 contract. That was the second lowest on the, of the team regulars. They threw in a $150,000 bonus if he did not go on the disabled list by the All-Star break, and also an extra 50000 if he made the All-Star team, which he did, both of those. So he got an extra $200,000 there. Um, also, they put in the contract... He would get a $100,000 bonus if Andre Dawson was named either the MVP of the National League Championship Series or the World Series. But the Cubs never got there. What they didn't put in was he got any kind of bonus if he was the National League MVP, which he did win. And uh, that year in 87, he had 49 homers, led the National League in 137 RBIs, which he led the National League. He also um, hit 287. Won the Home Run Derby at the All-Star Game, I believe it was, in Oakland that year. And the Cubs themselves finished 76 and 85, so they did improve. They got five more wins. They were still last in the NL East that year when the uh, St. Louis Cardinals won the division. He was the last player to win. Excuse me, he was the first. Let me get this. Mm, First player to ever win an MVP on a last place team, so... A little bit of uh, information there. He was an eight-time All-Star and was, as I said, the 1977 National League Rookie of the Year. Ten years later, was the National League MVP. Eight times won a gold glove. He had a cannon of an arm. Four-time Silver Slugger winner. Led the NL, as I said, in homers in 87 and also in RBIs that year. He's a member of the Ring of Honor for the Washington Nationals. A member of the National College Baseball Hall of Fame and is a member of the Baseball Hall of Fame. On the ninth ballot, he got in nine times. Played in two postseasons, 1981, the NLCS, where the Expos lost to the Dodgers, and in 89, when the uh, Cubs lost to the um, Giants, who went on to play Oakland. So, glad to add that to the collection. And now, yes, I got a dreaded return to sender. But it's a good return to sender. Why do I say that? Because... I filled it out. I put my... Ooh, get that down here. I um, put... Cover it up here. So we don't have any problems. Um, I put my address down, return. But what I did was just put the city in there. That's all. Put the city down. I didn't put the state or the zip code. And uh, it got sent back to me as return to sender. Insufficient address. Luckily, I had my return address on it, where I always put it in the box. So I was glad to get it back. This one took 28 days. I sent it to Massachusetts, but it came back from Charleston, South Carolina. There was no fee. He signed two cards, 1976 tops, and this one, a masterpiece. Tell about the masterpiece in a minute. And he also signed uh, the index card as well. Put his number and how long he played. Get out of there. How long he played for the Patriots, if I ever get it in the picture. There we go. Live TV here? I don't know. But uh, there it is, and that is Mr. John Smith, not the guy on the A-team, Hannibal Smith, who's John Smith as well. This is a football player, a kicker for the New England Patriots. If I can get him in there. All right, that'll do. Uh, John Michael Smith, born December 30th, 1949 in England. Yes, born in England, 70 years old. Trained as a teacher at King Alfred's College in Winchester, England. After one year of teaching, he moved to the United States. Now, he never played American football, but this guy was a great athlete and a great soccer player. So he approached the New England Patriots for a tryout as a kicker. Patriots uh, tried him out, and they saw some potential. And in 1973, he spent the season in the Atlantic Coast Football League, which was a league that was from, I think, 62 to like 74. It was kind of like a minor league of football. And uh, he played with the New England Colonials. And a year later, was brought up to the uh, Patriots squad to play in the NFL. Although he says 73 there, but he made his NFL debut in 74. And played until 1983 when he had to retire because of injuries. Uh, his most famous moment came on December 12, 1982. And I'll just throw that up here, this game. This game against the Miami Dolphins was known as the Snowplow game. Uh, during a timeout, Coach Ron Meyer sent this guy out. Mark Henderson to clear the path for John Smith to kick a field goal. And that made Don Shula quite upset. 
the, the thing was, Mark Henderson here was a convict. He was actually in jail at the time. He was on a, on a work release program on the weekend, so that was a big thing. And he kicked the path for Smith to clear, and that was the only points they scored in the game. That's the only, I think it was 3 nothing that game. So that became a famous uh, game there. He was nice enough to sign it. If I can get Mark Henderson, if he's still around, I'd like to get him to sign it too. <laughs> um, John Smith led the NFL in scoring in both 1979 and 1980. He retired the second-highest score scoring player in New England Patriots history behind Gino Capaletti. He's currently, I think, fourth now. Um, he currently runs the John Smith Sports Center in Milford, Mass., I believe it's called. Made one Pro Bowl, 1980. He was named to the Pats All-Decade Team for the 1970s. So, John Smith, when I saw the snowplow card, I figured I'd send to him, and he was kind enough to send it back. He even signed the index card there, so I got a three goods there. The uh, Masterpiece, and he signed the 76 Tops. I think that's my favorite set, and the old index card, so... You want to write him? He's, he's good. Send it right back to you. All right, and this next one took 14 days. There was no fee. Came all the way from Minnesota. This gentleman signed four cards. Yes, four. 1976 Tops. Another one of the Tops there. I can fix him on the stand. He also signed a 1977 Tops. 1980 tops, and this Super Bowl card from Super Bowl Nine. His team lost to the Raiders. We'll just stick that over there. And he also signed the index card as well. Put his number on there in the team. And that's Mr. Stu Voigt, Stuart Allen Voigt, better known as Stu. Born August 12th, 1948, in Madison, Wisconsin. 72 years uh, young, went to Madison West High School, where he was an all-star running back and track and field star. His state shot put record of 66 feet 7 inches in 1966 stood for 39 years. So, there you go. At the University of Wisconsin, he was a star halfback and tight end on some of the worst teams in Wisconsin history. He played varsity from 1967, including 68 and 69. Three years, his varsity teams had a total of three wins. That's it, three, and they all came in his senior season. In the 1970 NFL draft, he was picked in the 10th round with the 259th pick by the Minnesota Vikings and played with them from 1970 to 1980. He played in three Super Bowls, Super Bowl eight, nine, and 11, and the Vikings lost all three. His career, he had 177 receptions, 1,919 yards, and 17 touchdowns. He had two rushing attempts for a total of three yards, including one touchdown, and three kick returns officially uh, for two yards. Probably onside kicks that he recovered, I would imagine. But yeah, Stu Voigt signed all four cards. Uh, took 14 days. There was no fee for Minnesota. So, good signer. I don't usually send out four, but took a gamble. I don't like to send out too much. I don't want to ruin it for everybody. And also, we got another card here. Yes, another one. This is a three of three. Didn't sign the index card, but that's okay. Can't win them all. This one came from Texas. 21 days, no fee, and that is quarterback David Klingler. Well, David signed a card there of him in his Houston uniform in college and two Bengal cards there. So, signed them very nicely. Uh, David Ryan Klingler was born on Fe February 17, 1969 in Houston, Texas. He's 51, attended the University of Houston, and he set some records at Houston when he was there, those offenses. On November 18, 1990, Klingler threw 11 touchdowns against Eastern Washington at the Astrodome. His career in Houston, he threw 726 completed passes out of 1,262 total. He threw for 9,430 yards and 91 touchdowns. He threw 54 passes in 1990, which was a Division I record until 2006, when Colt Brennan of the University of Hawaii threw for 58. A little fact here, defending Klingler. Yes, Brennan needed three more games to do that. In 1990, he was fifth in the Heisman Trophy voting. The eventual winner was Ty Detmer. 
in the 1990 NFL Draft. He was picked in the first round with the sixth pick by the Cincinnati Bengals. Played in Cincinnati from 1992 to 95, and then with the Oakland Raiders from 96 to 97, and tried out for the Packers, but I believe he was cut and then retired. He injured his elbow and his shoulder in the offseason right before his third year, and his career pretty much was over from that point. And he eventually had an operation on his uh, shoulder and elbow. Before he had his operation, he could throw the ball 85 yards. After the operation, he struggled to reach even 35 He had 3,994 yards and 16 touchdowns in his NFL career and 22 picks. In college, he was the Sammy Ball winner in 1990. He was the Southwest Conference Offensive Player of the Year in 1990, a conference that does not exist anymore. And the first team, all Southwest Conference in 1990. His number seven was retired by the University of Houston. And he's now an associate professor of Bible Exposition at the Dallas Theological Seminary. So, Mr. David Klingler, great college quarterback. Thank you for signing all three of these cards. I appreciate it. Came out nice. Again, good player to person to send to. And now we come up with the pictures. And the first one came from uh, Illinois. It took eight days. There was no fee. He... He returned my fee, returned $5 I'd sent with him, so that was really nice of him. And that's former NFL player Mr. Ed Obradovich. I asked him to sign 1963 NFL champs, but he didn't. And okay, he did it for free, so what do I care? He <laughs> didn't sign it. Uh, Edward Obradovich, known as Ed, was born on May 21st, 1940 in Hillside, Illinois. He's 80 years young, attended the University of Illinois. Uh, Played his high school ball, college ball, and his NFL ball, all in Illinois. But before he played in the NFL, he did play in Canada. He played with the uh, Calgary Stampeders and the British Columbia Lions in 1961 before going to the Bears, where he played from 1962 to 71. Played in 124 games, started 99 of them, had 13 fumble recoveries for 12 yards and a touchdown, and even had a safety in his career. Uh, He gave the Hall of Fame introduction speeches for both Dan Hampton and Mike Ditka. So that's pretty cool. He played himself in the TV movie Brian's Song. So you ever see that? Look for number 87. And 1963, he was a member of the NFL Championship Chicago Bears. So thank you, Mr. Ed Obradovich, signing my 8x10, getting it back to me, and even giving me my money back, which he didn't have to do. The second 8x10 comes from a former college player who became an actor, college football player, that is. Uh, the Postal Service really banged up this uh, protector there. I don't know if you can see that, but it's all there's a lot of dents in it. But I got it back. It took seven days. There was no fee from California, and that's former UCLA quarterback, Mr. Mark Harmon. Yes, the Mark Harmon. He signed it, put my name on it, said, for Ed. Can't go wrong with Ed Obradovich either. Good wishes, Mark Harmon. He signed it in pen there, so it's a little hard to see, but there it is. It, he was nice enough to sign it and send it back. I thank him so much for that. Uh, Thomas Mark Harmon. Yes, Thomas is his first name. He goes by Mark. Um, born on September 2nd, 1951 in Burbank, California. He's 69. He's the son of former Heisman Trophy winner Tom Harmon. So he's not actually a junior because his dad has a different middle name. Tom Harmon won the Heisman Trophy while playing at Michigan, and his mom, Elise, was an actress. Uh, His sister, Kristen, became somewhat of an actress as well because she married Ricky Nelson of Ozzie and Harriet fame and was on their show. And his sister, Kelly, was married to John DeLorean. Yes, the car guy. Yes, the one and only. She married him. So they're married to some famous people. He is married to uh, Pam Dauber, who was uh, Mindy on Mork and Mindy. He played uh, college ball first at a junior college, Pierce College in Los Angeles, and then was recruited. And he chose the University of California at Los Angeles, UCLA. He chose them over Oklahoma. Surprise, how about that? He quarterbacked UCLA in 1972 and 1973, and his teams went 17-5 and won 77% of their games. His first game as a Bruin, They played the University of Nebraska, two-time defending national champs. 
They were 18-point underdogs in the Rose Bowl, but they wound up winning. Huge upset, 20-17 to on Efren Herrera's field goal. That's a good way to start your career. But he didn't play pro ball, became an actor, thought about going to law school after college. Um, starred in such shows as uh, Chicago Hope, um, St. Elsewhere, NCIS, uh, 240 Robert, did movies as well. He was also part owner in 1988 of a minor league baseball team, the San Bernardino Spirit. Why do I point that out? Because that same season, a young player by the name of Ken Griffey Jr. played on that team that he was part owner of. So thank you, Mr. Mark Harmon. Good signer. Signed the 8x10 and sent it back. And I appreciate that very much. And the last one is a baseball. Keep the, yes, the baseball streak going. No jokes. That's Mr. Dick Trzuski. I can say that right. Uh, This was nine days, came from Pennsylvania, not too far from where I live, and I did donate $5 because it was a ball, and I figured, you know, that's that's the least I could do. This is a lot more on eBay. And Dick Trzuski, born Richard Joseph Trzuski, February 3rd, 1935, in Enyon, Pennsylvania. He was a first baseman, second baseman, infielder, pretty much all around there. He started in the Brooklyn Dodgers organization in 1953, and it took him nine years to get to the major leagues in 1962 when the Dodgers moved to L.A. His major league career went from April 12, 1962 to September 27, 1969. He played both with the Dodgers from 62 to 65 and the Tigers from 66 to 69. His career average was just 213. He had eight homers, 91 RBIs, and 262 hits. After that, he became a coach for the Detroit Tigers from 1972 to 1995. He uh, managed two games for the Tigers in 1979 before Sparky Anderson arrived, and also 10 years later in 1989 uh, for a couple of months while Sparky was recovering from exhaustion. He um, then retired. He was a four-time World Series champ, three times as a player, one time as a coach, With the Dodgers in 63 and 65, and the Tigers in 68 and 84 as a coach. And he signed it. I asked him to inscribe 68 World Series champs, and he did right at the top. He also included 1984. So, thank you so much, Mr. Trzuski. I'm pronouncing your name correctly, I hope. And that was it. So, I know this is running late, and I apologize for that. I also want to point out that... Next week, we will have the Holloway give, holiday giveaway star. Whatever you celebrate, you know, Christmas, Hanukkah, Kwanzaa, whatever, ha- Festivus, I don't know. Whatever holidays you celebrate, we're going to have a giveaway. And the final few things I'm going to add to this thing. Picked up some more stuff. Uh, an autograph card here of Golden Tate I got. So if you're a Seahawk fan or a Notre Dame fan where you went to the Golden Dome there, that's a prize that could be yours. Also, I got uh, two packs I found of wrestling cards. Yes, WWE. So, if you're interested in that, that could be yours too. Also got a couple of packs of Topps Update. These things seem to be easier to get. I don't know if they're (laughs) that bad, but... And I also got a box of Update as well. I remember when the updates just used to be guys that got traded, and that was pretty much it, you know? rookies. And I picked up a Donruss uh, pack there as well. And also, you like the pharmacy boxes, I've got one of those. I'll throw that in there, anybody that wants that. And if you're a Mark McGuire fan, this package, Mark McGuire, 1987. I'll also throw in this Mark McGuire, 1990 Fleer. Got another Mark McGuire, a Donruss. That'll be, we'll get over there, Mark, in the package. And we got a rated rookie, Mark McGuire, right there. Could be yours. And also the Gold Cup, Mark McGuire. So, minus the light. So those are all the things that'll be thrown in there with the other prizes I've mentioned. And next week, either Monday, hopefully, I'll announce how the prizes will be given out, the contest and all that. Not a very hard contest, so don't worry. No brain surgery there. But again, I want to thank everybody that stuck around this long. You're really good people if you stuck around this long. I apologize for the length. been a while, so thank you for watching. If you liked the video, 
please hit like. Leave a comment. I try to, try to get back to everybody as best I can. If you're new to the channel and you like what you saw, please subscribe. And if you don't, as I always say, like what you see, please subscribe anyway. Maybe we'll have something down the line. So thank you, everybody. Stay safe out there. It's getting rough. Be kind to each other. Hope everybody had a great Thanksgiving, and good night, Louisiana.